Hello guys, are you interested in fully funded scholarships in Australia? If your answer is yes, then you're in the right place. So today we're talking about masters and PhD scholarships at the University of Tasmania in Australia. As you can see on my screen, this scholarship comes with a stipend of over 34,000 Australian dollars and it is for both PhD, which is 3.5 years, or a master's which is two years and then you also get let's scroll down relocation allowance of two thousand australian dollars so this scholarship you have to hurry because the deadline let's scroll down a little bit more the deadline is first of february so there was a deadline first of december which is passed already but the next one for both domestic that's home students those based in australia and international students the deadline for both um, group of students um, is the first of february and before then you have to put lots of things together lots of documents together which i will show you in the course of this video so what should you do now bring out your pen and paper you know sit down and take note as i talk you through how to win this fully funded scholarship in Australia that covers your tuition, covers your stipend and gives you 2000 Australian dollars in relocation allowance. And um, yes, that's it really. Welcome to my YouTube channel. It is Victor once again. It is another day and we have another scholarship. If you're joining us for the first time, you're welcome. But where have you been? You know, there are hundreds, hundreds of videos already on this YouTube channel on fully funded scholarships from around the world. So look around. I'm sure you find something that catches your interest. And if you're a returning viewer, returning subscriber, thanks for coming back. Thanks for the constant support. And I hope you get a scholarship sooner than later. So let's get into the video of today. So we are in Australia at the University of Tasmania. Tasmania University. And before we proceed, let's check what I call the English language requirements. Remember, some of these universities require you to write some of these English language tests, and some have waivers. So let's check whether we can get waivers. So this is the page on English language requirements. To get to this page, you can just simply use your search bar here and type English language requirements. So I've done the homework for you, but you can still go through the page to check if I can get a waiver. And then I've scrolled down to the bottom of the page. There are lots of talk about requirements and the standardized exams. Then I scrolled down and discovered that my country, Nigeria, here is exempted from writing any of the English language tests. So, so far you have a bachelor's degree taught um, from any of these African countries you wouldn't have to write the English language test. So check for your own country, if your country is not on this list, from those coming from Asia or other parts of the world, check and see. It's a very long web page with different requirements. So check if you can get exemptions as well. Fortunately for me, those coming from my country can get exemptions. So let's go to the scholarship of, of the day itself. So great. So the scholarship we're looking at today is, we have a couple of them here. The first one is the Australian Government Research Training Program, RTP. As you can see, full tuition for a PhD or a master's, and then you get your um, living stipend or your allowance, um, rather research allowance, traveling allowance, location allowance. Then, you can look at this um, document a little bit in detail that specifies what you qualify for and how you get your stipend. But that's like your own homework. I would leave that to you. Let's go to the next related scholarship and then I'll show you how to apply. So there's this other one. The second one is for indigenous students, which a number of you might not qualify for since you're not indigenous to Australia. But the third one, you might also qualify for it. It is the Tasmania Graduate Research Scholarships and offers similar stipend um, for master's or a PhD. And then you also get the relocation allowance. Great. So the big question now is how do we apply for these opportunities? So it is quite simple. So just go to this tab, go to study with us. 
go to research degrees research degrees let me demonstrate that once again in case some of you that's it so study with us research degrees can open this on a separate tab as well so this scholarship just to reiterate is for a phd or what they call a master's by research and to know what a research degree means you can read this tab on your own is different from a coursework masters so you're either doing a phd which is already by research or a master's by research so then what do you do so first of all you clarify the english language requirement which you've done already you talk about look at fees and um, scholarships we've also looked at that then you look for a project so this is very important there are several projects at this university then you look for a project that aligns with your area of interest or that aligns with what you've done in your undergrad or your work experience so now we'll open these projects and see so there are a number of them and then i'll use this tab to click on international to make sure that whatever i get is for international students and then these are the 100 let's see 136 of them the projects 136 so it's quite a lot then what do you do after you've done that you can use the search bar to type the area of research you're interested in for instance let's say climate climate change okay so for climate change there are 13 projects so what you, you need to do is to go through this project and see the one that best align with your interest i'm not sure of how many you can apply for at the same time but we can check the faq section later and see um, instructions on that but for now let's stick to this so imagine i'm interested in this one the marsh and um, salt marsh ecosystem and climate change so i open the tab and then this would give me a summary of what the course is all about it will give me a summary of what the course is all about let me close this quickly okay let's go back i think i double clicked great so this is it the salt marsh ecosystems and climate change so it is for a phd you can also use the tab to narrow it down to a master's master's by research or a phd so i left it open because i want to do both so this is for a phd and then it also gives you a summary of what the project is all about and then shows you the key professor in charge of the project and most importantly it reminds you that this project is covered by this scholarship one of the scholarships we looked at already the rtp scholarship and this is the stipend this is the relocation fees also covers your tuition it's also covers the tuition of, of international students as well so do not worry both domestic students have their tuition covered international students also have their tuition covered so that's good then the applications requirement which you can check on your own usually a good undergraduate degree some of them also ask for a good masters so you can check that on your own and let's scroll down a little so how do you apply imagine this is the project you want you've um picked how do you apply for it so you've checked the project is open to both home and international students then you're told to contact the supervisor so this guy is the one in charge contact him send him an email and then when you're sending him an email i'll put a link to how to contact the supervisor introduce yourself introduce your academic background your research background your work background if possible attach um your cv to the email so say i'm interested in this project i would like to work under your tutelage and i want to um, help to develop this project a little bit further so show why you're interested in the project essentially maybe you've done something like that in the past maybe there's a particular skill you have that would be useful to the project you know something like that so pitch yourself essentially to the supervisor and then they will send you a message saying oh we're happy to bring you on board or yes put my name forward something like that and then you're told to copy and paste the title of the project when you start applying 
and then submit with your CV and two references. And the deadline is the 1st of February, 2026. Then just click on the apply button and you're good to go. So let's go back to talking about the documents you have to put together. So this is the page we started when we clicked on research degree, right? And then this is where we found the projects, right? And then it's telling you to leave um, a lot of time to plan um, before the deadline. So do not just wait till next year before you start working. Try to start working on it as soon as possible. So here it's saying choose one project. So it's saying just one. Check the closing dates and everything. Contact the supervisor in charge. So as I showed you how to find a supervisor, contact the person. And there is a form the supervisor has to fill, the supervisory support form. And you have to attach this form to your application. So pitch yourself to the supervisor and say, this, when they say yes, say, oh, thank you very much for accepting to supervise me. I'm required to submit the supervisory form to attach to my application. So this is a copy of the supervisory form that the professor is meant to fill. And then I think you're meant to attach this. Either attach this to your application, the supervisor is meant to send it to them. Yeah, just read the instructions closely and see which is the case. I believe you're meant to upload it as part of your application and it is mandatory. So you need a green light from a supervisor to be considered at all for application for admissions here. Then develop a research proposal. This also scares a number of people that, oh, how do I develop a research proposal? I've not done this before. Do not worry. There is a video on this channel on how to do that. And for this university, it's just two pages. So let's say less than a thousand words. So that's, that's brilliant. It's very short. Something can put together um, overnight. So it's about the objective of the research. Important research questions, research methods, and expected outcomes. Very straightforward. Four subheadings, and you're good to go. When you watch my video, you see how to craft your research proposal around these around these headings, around these headings. And you're meant to submit this two-page research proposal with the supervisory form, with your CV and every other document when you're applying for the um, for the project you've chosen. You can see a copy of your passport, supervisory form, research proposal, um, evidence of a qualification like a transcript and the rest of them, certificates, CV, um, evidence of English test. We've talked about that already. That is it, really. So we can go back there to the different projects once again. And this is what I did. Clicked on this, look at the professor in charge told you how to apply for, to the professor and I'll link a, a video for that to show you how to do so and hopefully you find a course or a supervisor working in your area of research you can also do your education so there's something here on education there are nine projects on education and this is PhD this is PhD This is PhD and Master's by Research, so that's great. And you're looking for the one with stipend. Here they said no stipend, so that's probably not a very good one. Looking for the one that comes with a stipend. PhD, PhD. PhD as well, PhD. Okay, most of them here are PhDs. So we can use the filter and look for those for Master's by Research. So this is Masters by Research and PhD. Something about public health. Something about um, knowledge management. Masters by Research, PhD, AI literacy. Beautiful. The deadline still the 1st of February. Stipend still the same. This is for both PhD and Masters students. So go ahead and I hope you find something in your area of interest and then you contact the supervisors on time, and then eventually you get the scholarship. According to the timetable, let's go back here. This is where we started. So there's a timetable at the bottom here. According to the timetable, where's that timetable once again? Let's see, yes, I think this is the timetable. 
according to the timetable, by April, those who apply by 1st of February will get the outcome. So it means in the first quarter of next year, you already, you already know when um, you're, you're free. You already know when you're moving to Australia for studies, which is great, which is, which is very sharp. As usual, guys, I cannot wait to celebrate you. So fully funded, covers your tuition, covers your living stipend. As you can see, living stipend of over 34,000 and then relocation grant of 2,000 Australian dollars. As usual, I cannot wait to celebrate you. So get to work and I will see you at the top sooner than later. Bye-bye for now and do not forget to subscribe. Cheers.